today's video, I am going to show you how we render our tallow and how we can our beef stew meat. So after I had already filmed and edited the tallow and the beef, I got a bunch of questions on my Instagram about how to know what to ask for from your butcher when you want stew meat or when you want tallow. So what I tell my butcher is I want the tougher cuts of meat, the tougher roasts and the tougher steaks. I want that in one inch cubes and I don't want it frozen. And I want, that's usually what they call stew meat. Like my butcher says, do you want any stew meat? And I'll say, yes, I want stew meat. I want it in one inch cubes. And they'll ask which cuts I want in stew meat. And then I tell them that I want the tougher cuts in stew meat and turned into stew meat. And then they use their own judgment. Um, I'm not enough of a butcher to know which are the tougher cuts, um, but I'm sure if somebody else can probably tell you. And then for the tallow, I have always been scared to ask for all the tallow because I'm afraid it'll be hundreds of pounds of tallow. I don't know why. So I know that my roaster holds about 25 pounds of tallow and I know that that gets us through a year. And um, so that's what I always ask for. I always say I want 25 pounds of the best tallow. And then that's how I proceed from there. Um, things that we use the tallow for was another question. So we use it anywhere um, in cooking where we would, where it calls for cooking oil or olive oil. Um, I do not use it in baking. Um, I'm sure you could. We use it to make lotions. Um, you can use it to make soap. I have not yet, but I know that you can. And I have a video here on my channel and I'll try and link it here at the end um, with the recipe that we use for a tallow lotion. So last week we took one of our beef, actually I think it's been about two weeks ago, we took um, one of our, our beef cows to the local butcher shop and they called and said that our tallow and our stew meat was ready to be picked up. So I picked up our tallow and I don't ever get all the tallow just because I don't have room for all the tallow. Um, but this is 25 pounds of tallow and I have it in my roaster. I think this is a 20 quart roaster and it'll all melt down and the lid will fit on properly um, in a couple hours. So I am going to take you through the process even though I know that there is a hundred and one or a thousand and one other videos on YouTube about tallow. Um, I often get requests for on Instagram if I have a highlight on making tallow. Um, so I'm going to put it on here so I can send people the link. And yes, sometimes I brought my tallow home and put it in the freezer and then done this when I had time, but I decided to just do it right away because I need the freezer room for when we bring the rest of the beef home um, in a couple days. So this is a roaster I found at a thrift store and I'm pretty sure it's 20 quarts. And while I'm working here in the kitchen, I'm gonna let it turn to 300, 350. Um, and then overnight, I will probably turn it down to 150. Um, but right now, since I'm in the kitchen and I can keep an eye on it, I'm going to leave it at 300 um, until this all starts melting down a little more. So I have left it on 300. It's been about three hours now. We went outside, got some stuff done, but I kept a close eye on it. I come in and stir it, and you can see how this is all breaking down. But it's almost 10 o'clock at night, 
and I am going to turn this all the way down to about 150 and I'm just gonna let it simmer away all night and we will see what it looks like tomorrow morning. wanted to show you how beautiful and yellow this is. That beautiful yellow color right there, that is why we like to get our beef butchered in the summer because that is pure sunshine. It's all the vitamin D um, that that cow soaked up this summer, and it's all right there in that fat. So I was up at 5:30 this morning and turned my roaster back up to 300. And we are definitely making some progress. I'm probably going to chop some of these pieces up a little more and help them break down a little faster. But I'm not going to turn it up any higher than probably 250 today just because I don't want to toast it. I just want to keep on melting it. It is. So if I would have taken the time to cut these into much smaller pieces, um, it would probably already be done. Like if I would have cut them into smaller pieces before I started rendering them. So it is now about noon of day two and I've had this between two and three hundred all morning and it's done and I'm going to show you how you can tell it's done. It's, it's crunchy like a piece of fried chicken. None of the pieces are soft anymore so that means all the fat is rendered out of these pieces. Um, now, two things. This would have not taken near as long if I would have cut my pieces before I start rendering them. Um, so that's why I have such big chunks left. If you started out with tiny pieces, you're gonna have tiny pieces left now. going to dip all these cracklings out of here and I turned my roaster off about an hour ago but it's still really really hot so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my strainer and I've got it lined with cheesecloth. And I'm gonna carefully dish all this very hot tallow through the strainer and through the cheesecloth. Again, this time going through a double cheesecloth. And I don't know that this step is absolutely necessary, but I do usually get some more sediment out of there. And while I'm making a mess anyway, I might as well do it right. So 
So now that I've got my tallow strained twice, I'm going to pour it into quart jars. And I'm gonna leave about one inch of head space. So we've moved outside with the tallow. You have to be extremely careful when you handle jars with hot tallow because that would be a catastrophe if it would break and that hot grease would go all over you. But we've got them in the pressure canner. They're still very hot. So the water that's in the bottom of my pressure canner needs to be hot as well because you don't want to put hot jars of tallow into cold water. So I use hot water. Thankfully the hose is out here and it's been laying in the sun. So the water from the hose was perfect to put in the bottom of my pressure canner. So these will get canned at 10 pounds of pressure for 25 minutes. So since I always get a lot of questions about how I can my beef, I am just going to throw that in here with the tallow information. Um, it's really, really straightforward. So this is what we canned last night and then we ran out of time. So we put the rest of the jars in the refrigerator and we are going to can those this morning. Um, so all I do is stuff the jars full of meat and don't be afraid to stuff them all the way to the top because this jar was stuffed all the way to the top and you can see how the meat has shrunk together and it's nowhere near um, pushing up against the lid. So really, really stuff those jars full and then I put a teaspoon of salt and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper and that's it. Um, no liquid, I don't put any water in um, as it pressure cans. It makes its own um, liquid and what you see down here is just um, some meat juice from setting in the refrigerator overnight. So it's a teaspoon of salt, fourth a teaspoon of pepper, and then I pressure can them at 12 pounds for 90 minutes. And we are about, I think we're like 1200 feet above sea level. So you'll have to just adjust that according to your own um, elevation levels. But that's all, that's how simple it is. 90, pound, uh, 90 minutes at 12 pounds of pressure, and salt and pepper, and that's it. 